<laughs> Let's talk NHL playoffs for Friday, May 10th. East second round, game three, Panthers, Bruins tied at one. We're at TD Garden in Boston. Let's talk about this spot. I moved on it immediately, and I, I didn't feel the fear I usually feel, you know, when a team beats up the opponent. Panthers coming off the 6-1 demolishing of the Bruins. I couldn't believe that the Panthers were available at minus 115. Yeah. I just don't think that Bo Boston's full of character, but they're just not an elite hockey team. And when you get down to eight teams left in the NHL, if you're not elite, you get sent packing. The Panthers right now are at minus 123 at Pinnacle. They opened up at minus 119. I got minus 115 at bet 365. At that time, you know, my bookie, all these other books were at minus 125. I couldn't understand why it was 10 cents cheaper and I hit it. That's a good oh. bet. From a total side of things here, we are dealing with, well, I, you know, it's, it's also, you can make a lot of mistakes when you watch a game, you watch a team dominate and you think it's just going to happen again. And I get it, but I just thought like I had to take that number. I got in on the Panthers after the first period at plus plus one thirty last night. It was, it was all very good. But it had been a rough day up to that point. This total is sitting at five and a half. It's minus 114 to the under. Swayman, 5'3", you know, 1.82 goals against average, 942 save percentage. He still has great numbers despite, you know, getting touched up for four goals. I still think he goes in. Uh, oh, 100%. You know. Bobrovsky, 2.71 goals against average, 893 save percentage in the playoffs. He hasn't been that good, but he's made big saves when he needs them. Uh, Kent Davis says Circus still has a minus 118. So then wow. Boston's power play. 27.3% and penalty killing 93.3%, but they finally, Panthers finally got a power, a power play goal against the Bruins. We'll get into that. The Panthers power play is not being good in the playoffs, 18.2% and penalty killing 84%. So Montour had a goal and two assists. Sammy Reinhardt had four assists. Bobrovsky only had to make 14 saves. I just don't see how, I don't see how the Bruins can match up against this Panthers team every second night. I just don't see it every second night. Charlie Coyle scored for the Bruins. I love Charlie Coyle. What a year he's had. So yeah. Swayman allowed four on 23 shots. Barkov looked phenomenal. He looked so good. Eight points in this past three games. He, I've never seen him look better. He's looking great. I just, I don't know that there's only one team in the East. And it's easy. It's the Rangers, obviously, with Chesty. I mean, how, who else? Who else can mess with him? And Trocheck getting a chance to play against Florida. I know that would make him very happy. So, look, I moved on the Panthers again. I'm bet at four hundred, not at three hundred, and got a minus one fifteen. And I'm I'm just ready to get paid. I've got the Panthers to win the East and to win the Cup. I didn't get the best numbers. I got five to one on the East and ten to one for the Cup. Um, but this is get me out of jail free card or maybe I stay locked up, but I think they're going to get me out of jail. Take it away. Gokester Panthers Bruins game three Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Well, what a game last night was guys last night. If you didn't watch that third period, uh, Boston just pretty much brought out their bruisers and said, let's just fight anyone. And then pasta says, Hey coach, I'm going to fight Kachuk. He's like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm going to fight Kachuk. And he just, you know, dropped the gloves, almost got his face knocked in, but uh, Boston's pissed off guys. Then McAvoy too. He was flat on his face there getting his kind of getting, you know, beat up Boston in the first period guys at home, they're going to come out <laughs> as long as they don't take too many stupid penalties here. Uh, they're going to come out best. They're going to give them the, they're going to give it their all short and sweet. Uh, Swayman, they pulled them too. And uh, coach there gave him the, he just said, kind of just don't worry about this game's a wash pretty much where they're down five to one. They pulled them or I think it was four to one. And then uh Walmart came in. So they're going to go back to Swayman. I'm not worried about that. Uh, don't I, I think he's gonna have a strong bounce back game now five on five though they're just they're they're, they're slow they're, they're, they're just kind of like i was saying about against dallas guys toronto went sorry boston went seven against toronto had one day off and then look at what florida did right they they're they able to come in similar like a five-day rest so it's very similar i'm not sure if i can trust boston full 60 minutes here but the first period there, there's no way in hell this team's not going to come out uh give it their all here jim and i think it's enough uh, plus 104 I have first period money line on them. 
Expected goals, though, you know, 4.47 last game to 1.27. They just laid an egg. Uh, it looked like they were just too many games. They need some rest. They're not going to really get the rest either. So um, it's very similar to that Colorado-Dallas uh, game, guys. Um, I'm just not so sure about 60 minutes, how they're going to keep up with Florida um, five on five. So 76, 70 hits to your last game for Florida. It was just, a they were really beating up on each other. And, uh, more that happens, the more advantage in my opinion to Florida, uh, in this game. So first period, Boston money line plus one of four is going to be the action for Friday. First period for the Bruins. <clears throat> I'm not going to go back to the under first period under, uh, I think now that the Panthers have broken through the Boston penalty kill i think there's going to be power plays a lot of power plays i think there's gonna be a lot of emotion i think boston is concerned and i think they're going to emote montgomery's emoting all over the bench i mean i think i think they're just going to get in their feelings they're going to start chopping at kachuk they already hate kachuk i want to keep it clean Uh, Kachekov is starting. Wow. Oh, okay. He's going, wow. See, you know, he wasn't playing well. I didn't think he'd do it. You know, I was saying he's got to play well, Anderson. He hasn't looked good. So, you know what, though? This Kachekov, Russian goalie in the playoffs, going up against the Sturk, and he says, listen, coach, you know, he's – how he's going to be, though, just not playing playoff hockey in a little bit, that's going to be the question, guys. Um, wow. You know, Kachekov's in net there – they're, they're kind of saying it. I'm, I'm surprised by that. I kind of am. I thought they were going to wait till maybe the fourth game. But, you know, Kochekov, I still think – I know Billy, our, our resident, was saying they think he's the same. But I think Kochekov has a little more upside, at least. I think pressure is more – Kochekov can handle the pressure, I think, a little more than Anderson can in the playoffs. So that's, I guess, all I'll say. But interesting. Wow. <laughs> they're certain that that was the phone call. But you already knew about this. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. I did. I couldn't tell you guys. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, I don't. <laughs> that throws me for a loop, man. I mean, all I've said all year long. I like it. Is when Russian goaltenders play against each other. When yeah, when a Russian it. goaltender gets to go up against Chester, can they step up? And these are two kids like under twenty five. Like like this is a young and this Kochekov. Uh, he's in the, like both of them are very similar. Like they'll both go up to a player and talk shit, talk shit to the ref. You know what? <laughs> Maybe your goalie fight if all hell breaks loose. I could see that even happening. Uh, oh, but man. yeah, they're, they're the Russian goalies in the playoffs, they mean business. Look at Vasilevsky guys almost won three cups in a row. And there's another one actually in Milwaukee, Nashville Predators. Uh, yeah, uh, Askarov, he's another Russian goalie who will pretty much knock anyone out. Pretty much they come in, in the crease anyway. It's another Russian goalie, but. I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Um, now the over the over under, I'm not too sure about that now. I don't know how the game's going to go. I don't know how that's going to go just because it's his first game in a minute. But um, Kochekov and Shesterkin, and that's that's going to be must watch tonight. Wow. Okay. Let's go into game two: Edmonton Oilers at Vancouver Canucks. We're going to get into MLB after this, 10 p.m. Eastern on Friday night. Friday nights are my favorite opportunity to watch sports because I don't need to cap the yeah. entire card while I'm doing it. Stuart Skinner going up against Arters Shilovs. You know, Vancouver showed a ton of heart, a ton of character. And they ever? the city is buzzing. And Edmonton has got to be concerned. The biggest question, of course, is dry sidle. Do we believe Knobloch? Do we believe that it's a, um, what did they call it? Uh, just a little, uh, they call it so funny, just winded, just winded. cramping, just cramping and winded. It didn't look like that to me. I mean, that just, uh, that that's just, that's a bad excuse on the spot. You got to think of a better one than that. Come on. But he did come back in the third period. Uh, he is crucial. A dry sidle size is one timers. I mean, he if there's no dry sidle, the Canucks are going to comfortably win this series. The Canucks overcame a three goal deficit to win a playoff game for the second time in their history. God, I remember watching this game like it was yesterday. Game five, 1994 Western Conference final. We took out the Leafs four to three, double overtime that won us the series four one. 
God, that was magic. This Canucks team is so different with Nikita Zadorov out there. He's so tough. He's so cocky. He's so brash. He's so perfect. Connor Garland also, uh, they score 39 seconds apart. JT Miller is everything that anybody ever could. You put together a, I, you know, what, that was the only thing Benning did for us, getting him for a first round draft pick against, for, with, with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Dakota Joshua, a goal and two assists. He's, and then he, the big thing is that Shelovs only had to make 14 saves. That's all he had to do, make 14 saves. Uh, Hyman scored twice. Uh, you know, that that fourth goal, I mean, I, I was shocked that it went in. I know it was slightly deflected, but it shouldn't have gone in. You know, Drysaddle and Hopkins each had two assists. Skinner made 19 saves. He looked vulnerable. Uh, Vancouver outshot Edmonton 19-8 over the final two periods. They took the game to the Oilers. McDavid, where was he? A minus one in 24 minutes. No shots on goal. The question now is, should we, and I don't do this often, but after McJesus gets a blank, do you want him in the player prop market? Over one and a half? No, I, I think goal. And I know he only has one a goal in the playoffs, right? But He's been assist master, yeah. But so... But I need to know what's going on with Drysaddle because if Drysaddle is not there, not playing well, then the only person you got to focus on is McDavid. And we do have a ton of length on defense with this knucklehead team. So, so Drysaddle misses eight minutes of the second period. He returns for the third. This guy has played six playoff games this year, is multiple points in five of them. And Knobloch says nothing at all, just cramping. By the way, Hyman as the a tie with Mark Messier for the most goals by an Oilers player through the first six games of a playoff. He's passed Wayne Gretzky and now tied with Mark Messier. Take it away here for a uh, nut flush on as well as Jimmy betting a player prop. I, I've bet 746 in the last two weeks in NBA. Oh, Gokester, take it away. Your plan for Canucks. Well, uh. yeah. Your Canucks, man. What a game that was last night, brother. That's that's a sign that uh, they're not going to go anywhere in this series. I know everyone was taking Edmonton, too. You know, Shaq Hyman, uh, Zach Hyman. He's been uh, two goals again last game. But the rest of the team, you know, where are they? You know, McLeod, uh, Nugent Hopkins, uh, you know, Yanmark, uh, even uh, defense. They're just not that deep if I look at this team, really. Like, Vander Kane, too, he did nothing last game. It's similar to Colorado, just not as I don't know, I don't know how to say it almost, just not as not as good, I guess. I guess so lack of better words there, guys. Um, but in this game, Jim, I don't know, man. I think this uh I think Vancouver it's tough. I, I got nothing on this game to be honest. That Skinner and Sevos, they're gonna have to go to Sevos. They just have the momentum right now, Vancouver now. <sighs> The game on on Friday, you got to think Edmonton's going to come off, come in pissed off. But if there's no dry side, how are they going to how are they going to attack this game? I don't know. I really don't know this one. Unfortunately, guys, I wish I had a better breakdown for you. But um, going forward, though, in this series, you're going to have to see more from Edmonton. I think uh, that's that's a backbreaker losing that game. And then Skinner, he kind of couple. Well, I think it was the fifth goal, Jim, or the fourth goal. It was a bad goal. It, it, it was a bad goal. I thought so. Um, Silvos, I don't know how we, you got to think over more. I'm thinking about this series. It might just be an over series. Um, if Silvos, you know, it, it's a tough spot. He's going to be in with, with this, this Oilers team. And I do think you're McDavid. He's going to have to take matters into his own hands at this point. Uh, he's going to have to score. I think you're right with that, Jim. A goal prop might be actually where I look for McDavid more. I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah. If, if dry sidle is in. Dry sidle is in, and we are certain McDavid is not hurt. Yeah, those two things I've got to figure out. The next, you know, this game pops off what in thirty four hours. So, uh, yeah, I think that would be the only thing that I do because I do not want to fade the Canucks after that comeback and figuring out what's going on with Dry sidle. So uh, that's that's going to be the only thing that I do. I need. To see if he skates today, McDavid. I'd like him out there. I'd like them all out there. I want to know what happens at the optional skate today. And, and 
with McJesus always, you know, just petering out in the playoffs. Wow, Billy. I think he steps up. I think he steps up. Joseph Billy, Gomez, think- is, did Edmonton just get overconfident with the early lead? They just, I don't, maybe. Maybe yeah, they do that. They, they that's hundred percent. They do that. I think against the Kings, uh, a couple times the Kings almost came back uh, against this team. So they do kind of get. Uh, they, they. I don't know what it is, but that's a good comment there. They do kind of get a little overconfident uh, with the lead there, and then the Canucks. It's a team you can't call up, uh, count out. So, uh, and then Billy, I'm just gonna say he thinks Edmonton can still win this series. Yeah, uh, the, no the, yeah. I, I, I would agree. You know, the, this second game is, is big though. It's they gotta. Yeah, like think think if they if they're up and then Vancouver comes back again, it's just they got to figure out sixty minutes of play. They really they they got to play a better sixty minutes uh, against this Canuck team because I really thought the Oilers were going to win that game. Jim, when it was four to one, I didn't think they you know, but they just they flipped a switch and then Edmonton wasn't able to to keep up shots on goal too. Another thing I was watching that game, they had I think three shots on goal after the second period or halfway through the second. Like it was like seventeen to four shots on goal for Vancouver. They were just all over them. Like there was nothing uh, they, they they did there to to try to like at least score. Like they were playing too defensive almost, and that's not that's not their makeup. They got to start moving. They got to skate downhill too. So um, yeah, I think Canucks are uh, are live here. And then no Demko. Who knows if they can get Demko back? They get past this series. Vancouver could go farther than you think. So wildly interesting huge comeback for 604 nation um, i agree yeah. uh, great to see the character uh, shown by the boys so friday action right now i'm already on the florida panthers and i want connor mcdavid props i agree with but that i need some confirmation that one dry sidle has to be in so that's the first part of it and i would like mcdavid to be on the ice today I want just I want some comfort. If if he's not on the ice today, then I'm gonna have to go back into the lab with this. So there we go. All right, that is our NHL breakdowns for Thursday, May 9th, and Friday, May 10th. 